Up to now, up to now, up to now, Jesus, you have been called. Up to now, Jehovah, you have reigned. Up to now, Jehovah, who can stand before you and say it was otherwise? Up to now, my God, up to now, Jesus, you reigned. Up to now, oh God, be lifted, be exalted. Up to now, up to now, somebody just love the Lord, love the Lord this afternoon. Love the Lord, give God the praises, give the God the praises. Lift the name of the Lord on high. The Bible says, if it was not God on my side, who could have been on your side? Let Israel say, lift the name of the Lord up this afternoon. Somebody just love the Lord, love the Lord. Give some love to Jesus, give some love to God. Because it's taken the hand of God. It is taken the hand of God. Where we are today is taken God. Where you are today is taken God. Up to this minute it has been God. Were it not God on your side, then let Israel stand and say who it has been. Were it not God on your side, somebody stand and declare that God alone, it has been you alone on my side. And this afternoon, this evening, this morning, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, be thou lifted, be thou lifted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Bless the Lord of my soul, bless the Lord of my soul, forget none of his benefits. He that healed my soul, he that provided for me, he that supplied all my needs, bless the Lord of my soul. Somebody just love the Lord, love the Lord, love the Lord, love the Lord, because it's who who has done it. It is him, why not for him? It has been God all through, it has been God all through. And today we are standing because of Jesus. And today we are standing because of Him. Today we are here because of Him. Love the Lord together with me, church. Love the Lord and exalt the name of the Lord. The Bible says, Were it not God on my side, were it not God on your side, I came to speak to you tonight that you are marked of God. I came to tell somebody this afternoon that you are marked of the Lord. It is God who has done it. You are marked of God, child of God. You are not here by coincidence. Whatever you are going through today, it is not by coincidence. Every great man, every great man that is in today, you look at every great man that is living today, there are challenges that the man has gone through. There are mountains that the man has crossed. There are valleys that the man has crossed. Today I come to encourage somebody that you are marked of the Lord for greatness. The Lord has marked somebody for greatness. Whatever will distinguish you from another is the anointing of God upon you, child of God. Whatever will distinguish you from another is the anointing of God upon you. Child of God, you are anointed for greatness. Child of God, you are anointed for greatness. There is a grace upon you. There is a favor of God upon you. God has favored somebody. God has favored somebody. As you are crying out your heart, as you are crying out today, the things are not making sense. I came to let you know, child of God, you are in the process of God. Child of God, you are in the line of duty. Child of God, the Lord's hand is upon you. Child of God, do not give up on God because God is at work. Because God is at work. The fact that you know God doesn't mean that you'll be exempted from trouble. The fact that you know God doesn't mean that you'll be exempted from problems. The fact that you know God doesn't mean that you'll be optional from being challenged by the devil. You are in the line of duty somebody. You are in the line of duty somebody. Just praise the Lord with me. Just love the Lord somebody. Just exalt the name of the Lord because you're many in the midst all this in the midst 
midst of all this, in the midst of all this, the Bible says that all things work out for God unto them that love the Lord. It takes a man with revelation. It takes a man under the Spirit of God. It takes a man with the Spirit of God. It takes a man with the power of God to understand whatever he's going through. It takes a man with God to understand that even a man born of God can have problems. A man born of God can encounter issues. I came to let you know, child of God, it is a process. It is a process. It is a process. Somebody just love the Lord. Just love the Lord. Just close your eyes and praise the Lord. Close your eyes and just lean unto God. Look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. It is in the purpose of God. It is in the will of God. Jesus himself as the son of God had to count to, to, to take from the cup. He had to take from the cup. Yes, the cup was bitter. Yes, the cup was bitter. Could it have been by his own will? The cup could have not been removed, could have been removed from himself. But look at the will of God. The purpose of God for Jesus was to come and die. Was to come and die. Was to come and die. That you and I can receive this life. I come to speak to somebody. Somebody who is giving up. Somebody who is swinging in the tower. It is not yet over. 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 You are just in the line of duty. It is a process. And after it all, when all is said and done, God will be glorified. God will be glorified. God is going to be glorified. In the name of Jesus, 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 Father, your children are here today. Father, your children are here today. We are gathered for your name. Whatever we are doing, oh God, is all pointing us to you. Whatever we are doing, oh God, is all pointing unto you, oh God. Whatever we have encountered, oh God, we are all pointing it all to you today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Child of God, the Bible says in 2 Timothy, number 2, chapter 3, number 16, 15, 16, the Bible says that every scripture is inspired of the Lord. Take your seats for a moment. I'll be here to brief. I'll be here to brief because mama finished it all. Bible says, 2 Timothy 3, 15, 16, that all scripture, 16, that all scripture is inspired of the Lord. Every scripture is God breath given by ins his inspiration and profitable for instruction, reproof, conviction of sin, for correction of error, discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in conformity to God's will, in thought of purpose. Give me another version. Somebody is somebody's being mixed up. Hallelujah. Thank you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, number 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I want to talk briefly about a man called Joseph. It is not just a story that uh, the, the young children or the children in school are going are supposed to be taught. It is a, uh, uh, it is a context in the Bible. And as the Bible is all scripture is inspired of the Lord. Buenas, if you will. That all scripture, including even the, the story we're reading about Joseph today. Buenas, if you will. Everything in the Bible, the Bible says all scripture is
inspired of God that every man of God will be thoroughly equipped for every good work born as if he were. So today, if you hear about the burning bush, it is not supposed to just be a story. It is not just, just supposed to be something to be learned of students in school, but also supposed to point you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it's a written word of God. It is written word of God. So when the Bible speaks about the burning bush, what you do not, what you could not of it in the Bible unto Jesus, what does it point you to one as if you went everything in the Bible is about the Israelites in, in, in the land of Egypt. What does it teach you about God? One as if you went the other day, we are here for day night. We were told that every revelation should be point at Jesus. One as if you went, and today I came to tell you that every everything that is in the Bible should point you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Every story you have heard of in the Bible should point us to Jesus. Our center stage as Christians should be Jesus. Born as if he were. In as much as we are living here today, we are supposed to manifest here on earth, but we are supposed to manifest here on earth for Jesus. Hallelujah. In our areas of salvation, whatever we are supposed to do as children of God, we are supposed to do all things unto Jesus. Hallelujah. So whatever be the trouble, the troubles of Job in the Bible, these things are always supposed to point us to Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything we go through or everything we read, every contact in the Bible should point us to Jesus. And today I came to point somebody to Jesus. Today I came to direct somebody to Jesus. I came to let you know that there is Jesus. In whatever you are going through today, there is Jesus, hallelujah, because God has marked each and every one of us for greatness. Friends, if you were, if God has marked you and I that we're gonna get to this place, He comes and tells Joshua that this book of the law meditate upon it every day and every night for you to have good success. Hallelujah. When the Lord speaks of meditation, you are meditating upon the word, and this word is life. Hallelujah. The Bible says this word is life. So when we meditate upon the life, the life that God has breathed into us, we are meditating upon the good things that God has given unto us for us to have a good success. Hallelujah. For you to have a good success, for you to get to a good ending, there is a place of meditation. There is a place you must pray your, your, your encouragement. There is a place you must look unto for your help. Hallelujah. We are going to read in the book of Genesis 37. Genesis 37. From verse number 12. All of us and all of us know about this man we are calling Joseph. Born as if he were. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem, and I will send you unto them. And he said to him, Here I am. Continue. We are continuing up to verse number 20. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it will be well with, the, with the, thy brethren, and well with thy flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And a man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They were departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and fought them in Dothan. <laughs> and when they saw him afar, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Hallelujah. Number 20. Come now therefore and let us slay him. 
and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams for you to come to a point of realizing good success there comes moments of being thrown into pits for you to come to, to moments of realizing your dreams there comes times of which people will conspire against you for you to come to the times of enjoying the goodness of the lord in this land of the living there comes the times of people backbiting you for you to come to a place that you will uh, you will sing of the glory of god there must come a time that people must gang against you for your ministry to come to to come forth let me tell you child of god there are things you must encounter in this life until you have encountered this you are not Yet, child of God, I came to let you know that Joseph was a son, a son of Israel, a son of Jacob. Jacob, from the, from four wives, Joseph was a, uh, was was the favorite child to the father. Hallelujah! And this caused the the brothers to even hate him more. Born as if he were, and uh, things worsened when God was upon, was God was using Joseph. God loved Joseph, and God favored Joseph. Born as if he so God could reveal himself to Joseph more often in dreams. Born as if he were. God revealed himself to Joseph more often in, uh, in dreams. And Joseph knew how his future was. Hallelujah. So many times when he dreamed, he could come to his brothers and speak. This is what I dreamed. This is how I saw. And the brothers continued to be angry with him. Hallelujah. The jealousy increased. More so, as the jealousy increased, Joseph was favored with God. Hallelujah. I'm speaking about somebody who has been favored of the Lord, but he's in the midst of things, a midst of, of stuffs that he's seeing and uh, thinking that it is over with me. When God has marked you like he had marked Joseph, in a midst the problems, in a midst the issues, in a midst the hatred, in a midst the anguish, the pains, in a midst the throwing in the pit. God had already marked this man for greatness. Hallelujah. So, in spite of all things that could have happened to Joseph, the purpose of God upon Joseph was a must to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. One principle with God is that his word will not come down and return to him void. Hallelujah. Joseph had marked this, who was, had been marked of the Lord. And when God had marked this man, he was a man like you are today. So Joseph had to go through a process of life. Hallelujah. So in this process of life, Joseph is in, in the midst of brothers. Brothers who have conspired them against him because he had been favored of the Lord because he had been favored of his father because he, he had been seen as a favorite child in the midst 12 children born as if he were more so in a family where one man has four wives you understand in today's society if a man is married to another woman there is always strife there is always pain for other some family members because of polygamy so here has come a case when Joseph is taken as a favorite, a favorite to a father, a favorite to other sons, where a father has 12 sons, hallelujah. So the, so the father has 12 sons and he is chosen one as a favorite. You are the favorite of the Lord today. When the devil rises against you, there is nothing that the devil will do because God has already favored you. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, there is nothing the enemy will do. I came to encourage you today just like Joseph was found in himself amidst this family where his own people had gathered him themselves against him. Joseph knew who, who was uh, who was who was uh, who was his God. Joseph knew who his father was and in the midst of these troubles, in the midst of the, uh, these pains, there was God who was helping Joseph. Hallelujah.
hallelujah. You are here today. The economy is not speaking otherwise. Things are just speaking otherwise. I came to let you know, just like a Joseph, you are here today. Just like a Joseph, the Lord has anointed you. The Lord is here for you today. The Lord doesn't speak otherwise. Whatever the Lord has already spoken, he has already spoken. He has already said that he has engraved you on his palms. So you have to be encouraged. Just be encouraged in the Lord because the Lord has said there is no otherwise about it. So when you are in the process, when you are being thrown in the pit, you are in the process. When you are in lack, you are still in the process. When you are down today, you are in the process of God. When things are not making sense, I came to remind you, child of God, it is just a process. At the end of it all, the Bible says it has happened for the glory of God. There shall be glory. The glory of God will manifest. Things are tough, yes, but the Lord has marked you. You are marked of the Lord. Things are tough, yes, but the Lord has already marked you. You are in his palms. You are the apple of his eyes. So when things are difficult, just trust like this Joseph. Joseph looked unto God, even in the midst of the pains, in the pit where he had been thrown as a mere man like you. Joseph was flesh and blood, just like you are today. He suffered it. He, go, he went through a lot, but amid this all, he knew that the Lord was on his side. I came to encourage you today. Things are tough, yes. Economy speaking otherwise. People are speaking of giving up, but as children of God, there is a place we point our eyes. There is a place we are looking to because he is the author and the finish of your faith. You have no reason to give up, child of God. You have no reason to give up. Today, look on to Jesus. Just look on to Jesus. For the Bible says after all is said and done, the glory will come back to God. All things are happening for the glory of the only, only one, Jesus Christ. They conspired to kill Joseph. And among them, they saw that bloodshed was not a good thing. They said, no, let us not kill him. Let us throw him in a pit. And uh, after some time, maybe we can come up with a, a way of how to deal with him. While in the pit, uh, there was a brother called Judah. Born as if he were. There was a brother called Judah among his brothers. Judah loves money. Born as if he were. We understand from the story of Jesus. The man who crucified Jesus. The man who, who sold Jesus was called Judah. Even this brother called Judah, the brother to Joseph, had a thought of selling Judah, jo, 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 selling Joseph. He thought of selling Joseph. He came up with this plan. Instead of killing him, let us sell him, one as if he were. And Judah's idea was adopted. A man was sold. And even in the in, in another land where he had been sold, this man is put in a prison. This man is jailed without cause. I can to tell somebody you may be standing right with God you may be on the right course with God but there are people who are just angry with you there are people who are just jealous with you there are people who will not just want good for you but I came to encourage somebody there is God above there is God above there is God above today just be encouraged in the Lord Joseph looked unto God Amidst all these things, Joseph did not lose hope. He did not give up. His fear for God remained even when he sold in the land, in the land of Potiphar. Joseph still looked unto Jesus. One as if he were. Because he's a man favored of the Lord. He was a man of all. Whose, whose God's hand was upon. The man did not shiver. The man did not wear of circumstances. I came to just tell somebody, because you know where your help cometh. David comes to a point and says, 
I look unto the hills. Where does my help come from? And indeed, he came to realize that his help is only in the Lord. So in the midst of all these things, say like David spoke, that in the hills there is my help. In the hills there shall come my help. In the hills that is above me. There is somebody who is above me. When things are looking as if they are in turmoil, when things are not making sense, when I'm being persecuted for doing nothing, there is somebody who is above me. When things are turning out sour, there is somebody who is above me. The Bible speaks that the things of the spirit are only understood by them that are in the spirit, but them with a carnal eye, they will not understand. There are troubles that come to you that you are supposed to look with an eye of a spirit man. You are not supposed to look at some issues with the carnal eyes because when you look at some troubles with carnal eyes, you will speak like the wife of Job spoke that cast your God and die, yet there are things which are supposed to bring to you are some great death, some great results. There are things that will come to your life when you look unto them with an eye of a mere man. You will miss out on the mark. There is a mark that God has put for you that being a child of God, you are not exempted from troubles. Being a child of God, you are not exempted from luck. Being a child of God, that you are you are you you you, you will be you will be living a, a lavish life. There are days, there are days that will suffer. There are days that will go through hard times. There are days that will go through stuffs. But you who understand God, you will always look unto Him because He is your author, because He is your finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. Amidst all these things, you have to stand. You have to praise the Lord. You have to lift up the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. You have to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. You have to understand how to glorify God. You have to understand how to praise him. Praise the Lord even in the dungeon. Praise the Lord even in the fire. Praise the Lord even in this lack. Praise the name of the Lord in the midst of all these things. Being that you understand God, the devil will keep on fighting you. Being that you know of the faith, the enemy will still fight you. The Bible says that he's roofing over left and right, here and there, looking for somebody to devour because you love the Lord. It is a reason enough for the enemy to be on your case forever a child of God. Because of your love for God, it is a reason enough that your life may be troubled, that your life will, will may be miserable because of the attacks of the devil. Look at them that are in, the, in Changas and Busa Dens. These people, the devil has nothing to do with them because the devil has already won them. But you who understand Stand the secret, you who knows of faith, you who knows of the working power of God. The enemy is always on your neck, is always on your case. If it's finances, the enemy will always attack. If it is your house, the enemy will always attack. If it's your children, the enemy will always attack. If it is your house, your sibling, your business, the enemy will always attack because you chose God. But them that do not understand God. The devil has nothing to do with them. But as for you, children of God, I came to let you know, look unto Jesus. Keep looking unto Jesus. He's the author and the finish of it all. He has said that his word will not drop here down and return to him empty. He must fulfill. It must accomplish the purpose. And the purpose of the Lord, he says in Ephesians 2.10, that you are created for good works. You may wonder, what are the good works you are experiencing in that lack? You may wonder, amidst the troubles that you are encountering, amidst the, the, the ill health, amidst 
is the bad health you have? What are the good things you're experiencing? But the Bible says he is Jehovah Rapha. When he says he's Rapha, it means there's something he has done. When he says he's Nisi, it means he's giving you something. When he's saying he's Shalom, he's Jehovah Shama, there is something in that. In the midst of this trouble, this is when the name of the Lord is exalted. In the midst of these issues, this is when the revelation of word of God, like Jehovah Jireh, is coming forth. When you lack, that is when they call, they call God Jehovah Jireh. When you are sick, that is when they came to realize that he was Jehovah Rapha. When you lacked peace, that was when the name peace came about. Appreciate the Lord. You are marked, you are marked, you are marked of God. You are marked of God and the Lord must fulfill and accomplish the purpose he has for you. Child of God is not a time to give up. Nations are being tried. People are being tried. Communities and societies are being tried. And you will be tried. And amidst all this, let your faith not shiver. Because there is somebody who holds you. There is somebody who is holding our future. When things are seeming not to be working, there is somebody who is holding us in the name of Jesus, we know we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. If you hold on this word, that there is somebody who is holding up unto us, we are not giving up. We are not giving up soon. Hallelujah. Don't give up, child of God. Don't throw in the towel. Joseph has been sold to this land. When he gets to this land, he's put in prison for doing nothing. But look at the hand of God, even in the prison, the hand of God in Amlokota Tena. There are two prisons, prisoners who are speaking of the dream that God had revealed to the other. This is how God works even in the prison. There is God even in the dungeon. There is God even in the fire. There is God. There is no place that you will be without God. If you are marked of the Lord in the prisons, you will be with God. In the fires, you will be with God. In the dungeons, you will be with God. Because God is everywhere. The Bible says that his eyes are all over. One as if you even in the prison, the Lord's hands and favor is upon Joseph to interpret another, another dream there. One as if he went. And through this, one prisoner moves out after the third day. When he moves out, Joseph is still in the prison. A person marked of the Lord. Even if you are marked of the Lord, be ready. Be ready to pass through life. Be ready as Jesus was ready for life. Jesus was God in totality. But when he came to the face of the earth, he had to wear, to wear this mere body the way you are today. That the glory of God may be manifested in him. He did not, the man of God spoke in the morning, that he did not take advantage of him being God. He did not take advantage of him being God any, 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 anymore. But when he came here, he had to go through life. if he You have to go through life. As a child of God, you have to go through life. You have to understand that it is season. It's a season and it's a process of time. When this time has come, it should point you always to Jesus. When you are sleeping hungry, as people are texting and, and speaking of today, it is supposed to point you to Jesus as a believer. When your salary has been cut, cut down, as a believer, what is supposed to do? You are supposed to look unto Jesus. When things are not making sense, as a believer, you are supposed to look unto Jesus. Every situation in your life as a child of God should always point you to Jesus. If it's a revelation I give about life, this should point someone to Jesus. Not to me, not to life, not to general life. It should point me to Jesus. When I see him, Joseph in the prison is again favored of the Lord. He comes out from prison to interpret Interpret the dream of Potiphar. But as if you will. When the Lord's hand is upon you, when the Lord's hand is upon you, I'm telling you, child of God, 
It doesn't matter what you go through. Whatever the Bible has said, that for you to have good success, meditate upon this word day and night. Meditate upon the goodness of the Lord day and night. Paul comes to a point and says, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for he is good. This is what David says, that the Lord is good. In the midst this, God is good. In the pit of, the, of, of lions, in the in the pit of the dungeon, in the dungeon, God is still good. In the lack, God is still good. Give thanks to the Lord for his mercies endures forever. The mercies of God endures forever. The masses of God, the Bible says that every other day they are new. Every other morning they are new. The other day we are given a, a revelation that we are seeking about. We are seeking monthly bread. We are seeking cars. We are seeing things to last long that we forget to understand them, that God is solving our daily problems. God is in the, in the business of dealing with us daily. So when he says that give me this day my daily bread, we are forgetting. We want to amass wealth for months. We want to amass wealth for years. Forgetting that God is in a daily business with you child of God. Understand that today it's the better best day that has happened to you. Today is the best day that God has done it to you because he speaks and says that my mercies are new every morning. The mercies of God. The mercies of God. The favor of God each day. The grace of God upon you each day. It is new child of God. It is new and can do, uh, can accomplish much every other day. Yesterday if ever forget about it. Paul comes to a point and says, one thing I do is forgetting about the past and forging ahead because there is a prize I am, I am set, that is set for me. There is a prize that God has set for you. But if you be that person looking at the glory of yesterday, looking at the goodness of yesterday, looking at the power you had yesterday or the world you amassed yesterday, then you forget about the price of tomorrow. One thing about children of God, we have to understand there is a price that God has set for us ahead and this is what Paul says that I have fought a good fight I have finished the race until you come to this point of saying that I have fought a good fight it means you forgot the things behind you and you forge ahead. Child of God I came to remind you Fight this race. Fight this race. Fight this race. Fight it to the end. Because at the end of it, there is something you're going to achieve. There is a glory you're going to be clothed. There is a glory you're going to be clothed in the name of Jesus. In Egypt, this man who had been sold as a slave. He still finds favor before this man, Potiphar. He still finds favor before Potiphar. The Bible says, he is put in charge of the land of Egypt. This is a man marked of the Lord. This is a man whose hand, whose, who, uh, whom God has put his hand. In Egypt, the Lord Anamlokota, the Lord will pick you up. The Lord will pick you up even in that trouble. The Lord is still in the business of picking people. He says, I have heard your cries. I have seen your pains. I have seen your anguish. Whatever you're going through, the Lord has seen it. And he knows and he understands how to solve it. Even today, the Bible says that when Lazarus had died, Jesus comes before, them, before Martha and Mary. Martha cried and said, Jesus, could you have been here today? My brother could not have died. In John 11, 28, Jesus, 22, Jesus replies and says, even now, if you you call upon the Lord to give you anything he shall do even now child of God amid this that which you are in amid this that which you are stuck in amid this, this financial problems even now the Lord is able to take you out of it in the name of Jesus even now 
the Lord understands that whatever, whatever you are in is a process. Even now, the Lord knows whatever you are, uh, you are gripped in, whatever has engulfed you, whatever that is about to finish you, in your mind you are thinking you are done, but I came to remind you, even now the Lord knoweth. Even now the Lord is careful to know that the Lord is careful to remove you from it, step at a time. Patience. Persevere in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father speaks, always says, that's not every issue you are supposed to pray it out. Not every issue you are supposed to pray it out. There are issues that you need a spiritual eye to appreciate, to give thanks and to praise God in. Hallelujah. God has marked somebody here. Somebody was about to give up. Life isn't just making sense. You're just seeing that maybe the burdens are too heavy on you. Maybe the issues are too heavy on you. You are seeing that maybe you cannot get to this place we call destiny. But I came to remind somebody today that the Lord has marked you. You are marked of the Lord and when God has marked you, he sees that he shall follow everything to ensure that it comes to completion. Whatever the Lord started in your life, if it's business, it will not crumble. If it's family, it's marriage, it will not go down. If it is employment, things will not go down because God is faithful to his word. Malachi 3.6 Malachi 3.6 The Bible says I am God. Yes, I haven't changed. And because I haven't changed, you, the descendants of Jacob, haven't been destroyed. I am God, and yes, I have not changed. He's still the same God on the throne. He's still the same God that we are believing in. He has not changed. And because he has not changed, child of promise, I want to let you know, you will not be destroyed. Somebody say, Amen, you will not be destroyed. Because he is the Lord seated on the throne, you are not going to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.18 Bible says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This message we are preaching today is the power of God. This message is the power of God. The message I'm speaking of it is the power of God. There is power in this message I'm delivering today. Because God has given me this word for you who is about to perish. For you who is about to go down. For you who are about to give it, to throw in the towel. The Lord says it's only foolishness to them that are perishing. Like the wife of Job. The wife saw Job struggle. Go through a Lord and he said, do you, do, you, do you think your God cares about you? Failing to understand that it's a process of time. Hallelujah. Today, I pray that the Lord will make somebody be spiritual. Will make somebody be spiritual to see whatever he's going through is not about the carnal mind, but about the process of God. There are things when we look with a mere eye, we will see them and we will run from God. But if God has appointed you and if God has chosen you, you will always know the will of God in everything you go through. 
it is foolishness to them that are perishing. There are many people who will give up on the way when things turn sour. There are many people who will change their mind on who God is when things are not working well. That is what, that's what the Bible says, them that are perishing. But them that know who God is, they will still continue to follow on God. They will still trust in the process. They will still trust on God in the process. They will understand that this is just for a season and a time. I know my glory will my, my, my manifest. Hallelujah. A process of time. Process of time. Them that are perishing. Be very careful, children of God. When you encounter problems, you encounter issues in life. This is always a defining moment of whether you be the person God wants or you fall away. Hallelujah. It is always a defining moment when you encounter issues. This is when you will, your faith will either stand or you will go down. Because many turned their backs when they got to River Jordan and saw that there was a river. They failed to understand that there was God who had delivered them from this man who, was, who had been hard-headed. The Lord has brought them from, this, from the land and they had come to a point and when they encountered a difficulty somewhere, they chose to turn back. This is a poor, a poor moment and a time when people will always turn back and fail to see how God has saved them. It is a defining moment whether you are for God you are for, or you are against God. Praise be to Jesus. Let not issues define, define your good life. If troubles will define whether you choose God or not, then you are not mature. I pray that you mature a little bit. That when things are hard, you will still hold on to Jesus. When things are not making sense, when you don't have money in the pocket, you will still give to the Lord. When you still, you will still, you are broke, you will still love the Lord. Your relationship with God will not be touched in spite of the challenges that you will have. One as if you were. Philippians. Philippians. Chapter number two. As I'm finishing up. Philippians number two from 12. Children of God. Children of God. We have the Lord. The Bible says we are of God. And we have overcome the world. We are of God. And we have overcome the world. We have overcome the world because we are of God. If we shall embrace this word of the Lord, knowing that we are of, God, of him and we have overcome, there is nothing that will shiver, that will weaver our faith because we shall understand that we are of God if we point our lives to Jesus, if we look unto Jesus, knowing that he is the author, he is the overall, the center point, of our lives. We shall not look back at whatever is ailing us. We shall not look at the surroundings and fall back because we know we have overcome already. Paul says give me KJV. Paul says Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That, my beloved, as you have obeyed, as you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but now in my absence. When you are in tribulations, most of the time, you are absent from people. There are issues that will grip you. And when you are in your own corner, you are always absent from the people. 
Paul is saying that even in that time when you are alone, will you obey God in the situation? Will you still proclaim the name of the Lord? Will you still live for God even in that corner? Hallelujah. That when these people were with Paul, they followed whatever Paul could do. Whatever Paul could direct, they could do. But now, Paul is not out of the picture. Will you, as a child of God, follow what your Paul is telling you? Will you, as a child of God, follow what God has been speaking over your life when you find yourself in these issues? Or will you now with it from the picture? Will you now speak like this foolish woman of wife to Job? That there is no sense in loving God anymore. Will you still obey God even in his in his absence of the word? Even in the absence of of the witnesses of God. Will you still obey God when things are sour? Will you still obey the word of God? In all these things, Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Children of God, I came to remind you, in the absence of your leader, are you still going to obey what he has been teaching you? Are you still going to obey what Jesus taught you? That this word meditate upon it day and night? Are you still going to meditate of the goodness of the Lord in the trouble? Are you still going to meditate of how God had rescued you before? Or you are going to throw in the towel and say, At this moment, there is no need to have God. You are marked of the Lord. And the fact that you are marked of the Lord doesn't mean that you will be exempted. I came to just encourage you that be ready because more is yet to come. More is yet to come. Just be strengthened because the Lord is with you. Just be strengthened and have faith in the Lord. Know that the Lord will always fight for you. Fika wewe ni ebeneza Hata sasa wewe ni ebeneza 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 Till now he is Ebeneza Till now there is a place he has brought you And by the fact that a day is coming and going he is a Beneza. There are people today, their children are out of school. I just want to remind you that God is a Beneza. There are people today, even getting a meal is an issue. Still, God is a Beneza. There are people today sorting their rent, house rents is being a problem. But God is a Beneza. You can lack rent, but still have God. You may lack food, but still have God. You may lack finances today, but still have God. You don't have a car today, but you have God. The Bible says that seek thee the kingdom of God first, and all these things shall follow you. There are things that are going to follow us when we seek the kingdom of God first. If you have a revelation of how to seek this God, just seek the Lord. You will know who God is in trouble. You will know who God is when things are not making sense. After you have gone through it all, you will know that indeed it was worth Hallelujah. You will know that it was worth. You will know that it was worth. Whatever you are going through, it is worth. 
Because you will be counting at the glory that comes thereafter. The Bible says, the glory of the latter day shall be greater. Today, you may not see the glory. You may not see that glory, but the glory that cometh later is going to describe the man that believed in God years back. Just keep trusting in the Lord. You are marked for greatness. Somebody is marked for greatness. Just like a Joseph, you are marked for greatness. It is a process of life from being born, from being thrown to the pit, from being sold to the people that he didn't understand, from being thrown to the prison and being jailed for no reasons and to rising up to the levels that a man was admired by men and women of God, by great men and me, me, people of uh, people in the land. It is a process that I came to tell somebody that this is just a process. You must go through it for you to encounter and to have good success that the Bible speaks of. Child of God, do not give up of on God, rise up on your feet. Do not give up on God. It is a process that God wants you to go through. It is a process that God is taking you through. If you be spiritual, you will not be fighting God. If you be spiritual, you will not give up on God. You will always seek the presence of God. As Moses comes to this point and says, God, if your presence will not go with me, if your presence will not go with me, then God, let me not move from this point. Somebody just go before the Lord, tell God, I need your presence before me. I need your presence in this. I need your presence in this economy. In our nation, oh God, we speak your presence. In the economy of this land, God, we need your presence. The enemy will always attack anything. You know, when the enemy attacks a nation, the people of the nation will suffer. When the enemy attacks a household, the house will suffer. When the enemy attacks the head, the people under the head will suffer. So today, child of God, you are are the leader of your house. You are the leader of your destiny. You are in charge of your destiny. You just go before the Lord. Just tell God if your presence will not go with me from today. God, I need your presence. I need your presence, God. It has been hard, yes. But you have said in your word, oh God, that in the world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. Someone just be of good cheer. Someone just be of good cheer. That even in all this. You are still my God. Even in all this. You will lead me. Oh God. Even in all this. I am emerging as a victim. Even in all this. I am more than a conqueror. Even in all this. Your hand is upon me. Even in all this. I am still a marked person for greatness. You have marked me. Oh God for greatness. You are marked child of God for greatness. Give not up. Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not give up.